Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So tonight's video is going to be a spa night chit chat video and it's one that I'm very excited about because I haven't used my Freeman masks in a long time. And if you've been on my channel for a long time, you know that I really love the Freeman drugstore masks and I haven't had it in a while. And I went to Target today and happened to come across this. This is the Freeman Limited Edition, the Fave 5 Mask Kit. Apparently it's a new formula. I, I am used to the old formula. I'm not sure what is new, but I'm very curious to see if the new formula stacks up against the old formula that I love, that I've, I've loved for a long time. So I will be using one of these masks in tonight's video. So let's go ahead and just get started getting that mask on. I am sorry, by the way, I had mentioned, and I'll get to this topic in a second, but I had mentioned earlier in the week that I was gonna have a video up by Thursday of this week, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been so incredibly busy with wedding planning and I've been busy, I mean, for months. We started planning the wedding back in March, which is when we first got engaged. And I feel like wedding planning is the single most, it's the single most stressful and mind numbing thing I think I've ever done. I can see now why people save up money and invest in wedding planners. Like I, I can see the value of them now because I've been trying to plan my wedding now for a few months and I feel like I'm losing my mind with every decision I have to make, with every payment we have to make. Like it is expensive to actually have a wedding. And I, you would think that I would know that already after being married already once, but I'm gonna be honest with you. My first wedding wasn't really a wedding. It was probably one of the most ridiculous things I've ever done and one of my biggest regrets, but it is what it is. We were young and dumb and we thought we were in love. We were just two dumb kids, you know what I mean? So it is what it is. We did what we did. We can't go back and change it. And it was some random Friday, I think in June of 2014 when I did it. There was literally no planning involved whatsoever. So I have never experienced what it's like to actually have to plan a full wedding. I thought I had a mask applicator tool somewhere. I've searched for it for the last 10 minutes. I kid you not. And I don't know where it went. I think little miss across the hall here might have confiscated it and used it for one of her experiments. She loves mixing little potions like we'll be outside. It's very like brujeria kind of things. You know what I mean? Like I love it. It's so cute to watch her, but she'll mix like, like sand and dirt and leaves and like petals from flowers and water. It's so cute. So I'm not mad at her, but it's like, it's my tools for makeup and my skincare stuff. I tried telling her, I literally bought her an entire kit of her little tools that she can you know, mess with. They're not as fun apparently as mom's. So I've noticed a lot of my brushes that I used to have, they're gone. The point I was getting to is I'm gonna use my hands to apply this to my face. I'm not gonna apply it to my entire face. I'm only gonna do it to the problematic problematic areas, words are hard. I'm only gonna do it to the problematic areas on my face, which tend to be my cheek area and a little bit up here as well. Uh, but for the most part, that's really the only places that I usually put a mask anyway. So it's nothing different. I owe you all an apology for the fuckery that was the last video that I had uploaded on my channel last week on Tuesday, I believe it was, because I did have a video up. I had left it up for maybe, maybe 10 minutes, if that, maybe, most likely less than that actually. And then one of you, Vader's pet pig, love you bestie, thank you so much, uh, clocked my ass. You're like, uh, no, you're wrong. So in that last video, in case you did not watch it, the reason why I had taken it down is because I had misspoken. And one of the worst things you can do as a creator on any platform of any size with the audience, like whatever audience number you have, is get on your channel and discuss things that you really have not looked into. And I've always pride myself on being someone who really likes to look into things before I speak on them. In that video, I was talking about Jaclyn Hill and how from what I had not really seen, and that should have been my first red flag to not speak on it, but I did what I did and I'm guilty of it and I'm going to apologize for it. Um, but I had not, I talked about not seeing Jaclyn Hill really being problematic. I, I think I mentioned in the video too that I believed at one point she had apologized for the mishap or the absolute disaster is more fitting than I should say about what had happened with her lipsticks and the launch of her cosmetics brand a few years ago. And I had compared 
what had happened to her and how she has been treated basically on YouTube and basically all of social media since then compared to the likes of the Shane Dawson's and the James Charles and the Jeffree Stars of this community. Cause it feels like those three dipshits have kind of slithered their way back into content creation and doing whatever the fuck it is that they did on their channels prior to them being exposed for all the shade things that they did. And it seems like they've kind of just gotten away with everything basically unscathed, especially James Charles, where James Charles is concerned. But I digress. But I had made a point and said something along the lines of, I don't see how these three dipshits can have platforms and be treated like they are worthy of a redemption arc or be worthy of a comeback. But then we have Jaclyn Hill, who has mostly remained unproblematic, has been quiet under the radar, who made a mistake and was involved in some pretty shitty things. Yeah, that's something I should have looked into before I said anything. Because Vader's Pet Pig, who is a subscriber of mine who has been on my channel for a while, clocked my ass and was like, uh, you're wrong you're done and they're like no she follows james charles still like still supports him has been using his products on her channel and of course like i in my mind i've openly talked about how i really have not been as present on youtube in a long time and it really has been a long time i should have done my due diligence before speaking on anything and i should have just gone to her channel and her instagram to see what she's been up to recently because sure enough She's following James Charles. Someone had said that she's actually also been using his products and then said that she was tired of cancel culture, which is completely just hilarious coming from that one. Let me be 1000% clear about something, okay? The only people who have any issue with cancel culture are the people who have been directly impacted by cancel culture, meaning they're the ones who have been canceled for something either in the past that they're being exposed for or doing something shitty now. And I feel like Jacqueline is a happy mixture of both. So the reason why she stands against cancel culture is only because she's being held accountable for her shitty behavior for a very long time and she's sick of it. That's all it is. She does not want to be held accountable for the crappy things that she does. But that's that's the way they all think. They all think that they should be able to just get away with whatever the fuck it is that they're doing. And I'm sorry, that's just not the way it goes. You're a public figure and you've made your living, you've made your life off of creating content on a public platform. So I don't understand how these creators don't get it that you in putting your life and things that you do out on the internet, you are opening yourself up to scrutiny about everything. And I just don't understand how they don't understand that when they do shitty things publicly, they're going to be exposed for it and called out for it. And they're going to be held accountable for it. Like, what is not clicking? Because I feel like a lot of people complain about cancel culture, but they're not understanding. If you don't do shitty things, you wouldn't be canceled. In any case, I owe you, my subscribers, the biggest apology for that because had I done my due diligence to take the time to look into Jacqueline and what she's been up to recently, because like I said before, I really haven't been active in the beauty space on YouTube. So I wasn't keeping up with anybody in particular until recently, but that's not an excuse. Like I should have done better. And it's something that I've, I've known that I've had to do, if I'm gonna do a video, I have to do research so I know what I'm talking about and I'm not just talking shit, cause here I am, up shit's creek without a paddle, talking about supporting someone who openly supports a fucking predator like James Charles. So, to make myself abundantly clear, just so we're all on the same page, I do not support Jaclyn Hill or anybody who supports James Charles or anyone like him at any capacity at all, just so we're clear. Anyways, um, the last thing that I was asked about, um, I was asked to give my thoughts on whatever the fuck was happening, what, a week or two ago with the larger drama channels on the YouTube platform. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't give a shit about any of them. I haven't in a very long time. 
I removed myself from being friendly. I was never friends with anybody, any of them. Um, I removed myself from being friendly with them once I realized how nasty and mean that they all were. And so I've had them blocked for a, a long time now. So I had no idea what was happening until I had happened to go on, onto Reddit at one point a few weeks ago. And I noticed there was a whole thing being talked about about them. Now keep in mind, this is all very old tea. This is like weeks old, no one gives a fuck anymore. But the only reason I'm bringing it up is because I feel like there's a good lesson that should be learned, especially where Jen is concerned. And I feel like it's a really good lesson that people should learn hopefully only once and this shouldn't be something that they continue to have to learn over and over and over again and that lesson is there comes a time in your life where you have to evaluate and reevaluate the people that you choose to have around you and it's something that i've had to do i've had to make the decision to walk away from friendships that didn't align with who i was or at least the people that i was surrounding myself with weren't the kind of people that i wanted to be associated with and i don't understand why anyone would want to be associated with those two because they've been known to be mean very mean they've ha they've been known to have transphobic and very racist viewpoints and i feel like i feel like if you're someone who can look past those types of things it says more about you than i think you acknowledge jen because those types of things should not be looked past right and one of the things that i have heavily talked about on my channel has been patterns of behavior and the fact that patterns should be acknowledged and you should pay attention to those and what's funny is that they've also been known for burning bridges with people and then going after them but for you to have looked past all these really fucked up things that they've done and said in the past and to open up your house to them and then to be so surprised when they turn around and bit you in the ass the same way they've bit everybody else that they've been friends with in the ass what did you expect cannot live your life in such a way where you treat people like shit you are mean and you have those transphobic and very racist viewpoints you cannot do that and live a happy life without facing the consequences eventually for those actions and you know what karma will get to them if it hasn't already i have no idea what what their life has been like since i last spoke to them and i don't care the only reason i'm talking about this is because where jen is concerned I feel like, like I said, the biggest lesson that can be taken away from this is to pay more attention to who you allow in your inner circle and who you surround yourself with. Because especially if you choose to ignore these shitty and very nasty things that people do to other people, thinking that it's not going to happen to you, that is foolish. I'm going to end this off by just reiterating. I am telling you, if you walk away with anything, from this video. Evaluate and reevaluate the people that you keep in your life, in your inner circle, because things like this can happen. And it sucks. It's hard to lose people who are who you thought were friends with you. But when they've shown you who they are many times and you choose to ignore that, what else could you possibly expect from those people? And that is why acknowledging a pattern of behavior and being like, yeah, let me not, let me not become close friends with that person because of that really sketchy or very mean or very hateful or racist views or transphobic views. Those are not the things that align with me. I don't want that around me. No one should want that around them, but birds of a feather, I guess. With that being said, I'm done for the night. I'm gonna go take a shower and relax before tomorrow is Monday and everything starts all over again for the week. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.